trash, 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 super trash. Why the fuck you ain't got no blue trash? Huh? Desi Banks got a blue check for me. Marco got a blue check. I guess I got to go around interviewing bums too. Get them. What do I got to do to get yo, my shit? shit? Yo, when you get your blue check, tell me give me one. Come on, let's go. Man. Man. He trash. He trash. He trash. He trash. Trash Talk. I'm your host, Bubba Doug, and today's show is so big, I can't even talk about it. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, I have something big. Check this out. Cheers. This place is perfect. So before this weekend's over, it better be fireworks. You understand me? I think it's over. I saw the angels standing around. Coming to the stage, matter of fact, y'all get up. I'm bringing Joseph Shakira and Dion Taylor. Go. Say thank y'all. Welcome to the Trash Talk Show. Man. Good to be here. Man, how did y'all two link up, man? How did this come about? Oh man, uh, years ago, man, we was. Um, I was fortunate enough uh, at the time I was casting a movie called The Intruder with uh, Michael Ealy and Dennis Quaid, and uh, my brother, man, Omar Joseph, came up to him and was like, "Yo, you guys got." We was trying to find a black actor, Whoa. and he was like, um, "Man, I got an actor that's blacker than black." <laughs> he ain't black. So black he's white. <laughs> so black he's, and, we was, and he was like, I was like, who? And he said, Tommy from Power. And I'm like, oh man. And at that time, the show was just breaking. And uh, we met. And uh, from there, it was, a, it was a wrap, man. We just became very close. Uh, obviously, he went on to star in a movie with Michael Ely, Megan Good, and Dennis Quaid. Yeah. And uh, I think we've now worked. Well, four been, times. Four times now, yep. Yep, both Power finales mm. and uh, now Fear. That's good. Y'all give yeah. it up for them. Yeah. 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 It's funny you say that if I was looking for a black character, but he was white. That's how I felt when I seen Tommy in Power. That's right. Like, this gonna sound crazy, but this the truth. Tommy's character was so hard in Power, he made me want to be white. My <laughs> <laughs> baby mama like, what the fuck wrong with you? Because you just, man, you was everything that, why I'm from, from the South. And you know what, you know what the what the show portrays drugs and this and it just how strong and hard like you. I'm talking about a white boy, hard. Yeah. <laughs> it just, it well, just fucked me up. Well, man. Tommy was true to the game, and then also Tommy had all of these elements that a lot of the other characters didn't have. One of them was loyalty, but the other one was humor. Yeah. Everybody, everything was so dark and so deep and so brooding, and so was Tommy. He was no nonsense, yeah. but there was a lot of laughs. There was a lot of physical comedy in the beginning because Tommy on the page in the first season of the Power Show. Tommy was pretty two-dimensional. Uh, he was either all in or, or all out or kind of reserved. And so I, I wanted to make him funnier. So when I said one time when I'm bringing Holly back to the crib at the first time, yeah, I, mean, I said, can I put a gun on the table? They're like, oh yeah, yeah, Tommy's tough. Yeah, you put a gun on the table. But they didn't realize I wanted to put the coat over there so where she's like, oh, let me put that gun on there. No, it's all, okay, I'm okay. So you start doing the physical comedy and then they started writing the comedy for me because I do have the timing down. Right. Um, so then Tommy kind of became the comic relief of that. But it just made him 360. 160 degrees. Like the Tommy character, it's 100% rooted in reality. And it gives me this opportunity to play somebody that's very, very different than anything you've ever seen me do. That's dope. Give it up for that. Speaking of the character that y'all uh, play, do you, do you often find yourself doing that in real life? My wife would not tolerate that. <laughs> um, so no, but uh, I also do have a, an extensive theater background. I was I had the luxury of 
uh, starting this process when I was 10 years old, so I've been doing it for a million years, but with not much success. And I think that we don't hear about that a lot, you know, people that are not overnight successes, people that have had 30 years careers. You know, I was a 35 year old man with my girlfriend, now my wife, taking care of us and paying all of our bills because I couldn't afford anything, but she saw that I had the drive. Okay. And when you have a partner that supports you, Y'all hear that? She stayed down. Yeah. Gotta stay down sometimes. Ten yeah. toes down so sometimes. And wait. Know, like wait. No, I was just saying and wait. Like, give them a moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sometimes you see something special, man. You gotta let it let it grow and manifest. You know what I mean? Some people be in a rush to hurry up and make somebody jump or do something different. Sometimes you man or female. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sometimes you gotta let that person be what they are or leave them alone and go about your business and let them keep on manifesting. Dope, dope. Oh. Yeah. Do, you don't owe 50 cent no money, do you? Thank God I don't. <laughs> I haven't made that mistake yet. In fact, if I ever owed him anything, I paid him back. <laughs> he made me feel like I owed him. Oh my God, <laughs> that shit crazy. <laughs> so what, what, what's some of the crazy things you have to do that you ever had to do on set for the both of you? Oh, well, one of the crazy things that happened while we were filming this movie is I broke my kneecap. Um, I was trying to, I was doing those hit classes. I had been doing them for a while, but now I'm up in Lake Tahoe on a um, rock floor, concrete floor. And I'm trying to do, you know, jump split squats. And of course I happened to smack my knee, not on a mat, not on wood, but on a rock. And so I, I cracked my kneecap and we had to do the rest of the film with me with a broken kneecap. Um, and we, this is the middle of COVID. We didn't know what COVID was. They're like, oh, you should go to the hospital. I was like, no, I will li live with whatever is happening here. So that was scary and I was scared, but uh, Dion, with Dion's help um, and, and, and Tip's help and uh, you know a little bit of touch at the end of the night, I was good. I made it through the run um, and with the support of my friends. Well, it was good. good. I would say the craziest thing we did was make this movie fear. Uh, so a lot of people don't understand the background of the movie, but what had happened was uh, right at the, at the height of COVID, uh, when, you know, now we have a conversation about it. People have whatever thoughts they want to have about COVID or vaccines and all that. But there was a moment in time where everybody in the world was scared. I really think we then just got to the point to where I think it's safe to say we we're past uh, the breaking point. 10,000 people did today. It was that moment. Yeah. And uh, then we coupled that at this exact same moment with George Floyd being killed. And if for y'all to remember, it was a moment where it was just pure chaos. Yeah, it, was. It, was, it, was, it was no vaccine. It was like, what is this thing? It was people marching all over the country. And we was right in the middle of that. And uh, we had like formulated a march and I got a little confidence. I was like, man, it wasn't about me getting sick. It was more about my kids. Yeah. My mom is older, you know what I mean? I was just like, man, I don't know how that would affect them. But at that moment in time, I was like, man, I got to do something art wise. I, I just had to get out. And um, I had made a couple of films right before that. And we were kind of in, in the moment. I think Black and Blue, we had just finished that. That had just came out and, oh, thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, so I got like I had an idea one day, man. I was just like, I'm gonna just see if I could make a film and uh, called Joe, pitched it to him over the phone, probably for an hour. <laughs> and he was like, all right, man, this sounds incredible. Send me the script. And I said, I don't have no script. <laughs> so he was like, what? So that's how it started. And uh, next thing I know, he trusted me. He got in the car from Brooklyn, New York and started driving towards California to me. And uh, remember the airports are closed. It's a wrap. So from there, I just called everybody else. If you picked up, I was pitching. So there was a few actors and actors I called, they didn't pick up. If you picked up, I was like, yo, blah, 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 we doing this. And uh, that cast became Joseph, T.I., King Batch, Terrence J., Annie Alonza, like just a beautiful cast. And uh, we descended onto this property in the middle of nowhere. And uh, Roxanne, who produced the film, basically went and learned called the CDC at the time. There was a loophole there. They didn't know if you could film or could not film. Mm. And we just took advantage of it, man. At the, at the height of that pandemic, we were out there shooting a movie and uh, we did something really, really incredible, man. So now to see that movie in the theater is like, you know, this last two weeks, we just be like, damn, that's crazy. That was a moment in time where everyone was stuck and uh, we were actually out there doing exactly what artists are supposed to do, which is create art that reflects the time that you live in. And that's exactly what you're supposed to do, no matter what type of artist you are. You know, years ago, during the war and fighting and all that, Marvin Gaye made 
what's going on. Like this is exactly where you're supposed to be. So we're excited, but I think that's the craziest thing I've, I've ever done with no script in the middle of a pandemic, just that, make a movie. That pandemic was crazy, you know, seeing people die from that. Yeah. But I also kind of missed the pandemic from the check Trump was giving us. Yeah. Oh man. A lot of people man. was. Man. Yeah, but look, look, here's the thing, man. That's interesting because even when you talk about like, I remember, you know, having this conversation with a lot of people, like, Trump giving us, that's the Trump the president, he's supposed to. What he did differently was like game a lot of people, man, because he did a whole media stunt and act like he's putting his name on the check. Yeah, he did. And for dude. people, and for people that don't know and don't understand, they felt like that. Yeah. They felt like, man, that dude giving me no. He's supposed to. Yeah. If, if it was Ronald McDonald <laughs> in the White House, you was gonna get that same check. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's interesting that way, man. Just think it. Look, I, I, I really believe spiritually, man. That whole COVID, that whole moment, everything we went through was actually everything being broken down so people could be reborn and rebuilt. And you came out of that, yeah, you came out of that in a different way. That's good. Uh, yeah. This is a part of the show where we are uh, uh, sending it over Dumb and Boogie. All right, fellas, listen. This part of the show is a segment where we, we determine whether it's trash or fire. And y'all personal- Trash or fire? Yes. Trash or fire. You gonna tell me what, just one type of thing in your opinion, whether it's trash or fire. Trash or fire. All right. Do it. So for you, this would be playing in a hit series as a uh, lead, and this would be you directing. Playing in a hit lead series, it's hit. Trash or fire? I mean, fire, right? Yeah. Playing in a, a hit series on yeah. TV? Yeah. Yeah. That's fire. And just really quickly, I just want to add that Dion made me a producer on this film, not as a vanity title. I yeah. share in this. Yeah. 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 And he didn't have to do that. Nobody, 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 nobody does that. So that, I just, I just needed to get that out there to give love because if you want to bring up people, you give them these opportunities. And he didn't have to do that, but he did do that because he believes in me, and I'm very grateful. So for you, you actually directing something lead or something hit is that is that a lot of pressure on you as a as a director? Is that no? Pressure? I would say I mean I, I, it obviously would be fire because that's a blessing. Yeah. But at the same time, if, in this state that I'm in, it would probably be trash. Based, <laughs> <laughs> based on the fact that uh, you know what a lot of people don't know is TV is very demanding. Uh, you have to really lock off and be in that space, and there's nowhere else to go. Mm. So those people that are working on those shows. Um, they are there six, seven months at a time. There is nowhere to go. There is no other movie. There is no other show. There's nothing else you can do. Um, my brother who's in the audience right now, uh, Ephraim, former NFL player, man, is a writer on Bel Air. Uh, this is second season. And, um, I say that because in two seasons with him writing on Bel Air, I didn't probably did three movies and four TV shows. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, that's crazy. You still over there? <laughs> that's just kind of, but that's the world. So a little bit of it's like timing, you know what I mean? Yes. Especially for, for Joseph, like the blessing for him is, you know, being on power, how many years has it been? Uh, I'll be starting my 10th year. Woo! A decade! Yeah! Can you? Can you imagine the checks? Yeah. Yeah, yeah for real. Look at the checks. Yeah. We're getting there. No, but that's 10 years. He's been really blessed because he's been able to actually go do Ozarks, shoot Fear, do Intruder. Oh, like, he, is, he has found other moments to be able to jump out and do something while his career is in the upspin. Most people don't get to do that. Yeah. So. Oh, awesome. So I'm going to say Trash Fire. Okay. Next one. Poly relationships. Absolutely oh, not. Oh, my <laughs> wife would be, no, no, I, and I'm happy, man. You know, I, I got married later in life. I got to have my poly trolley, uh -huh. uh, <laughs> you know, jump on the bus of relationships, yeah. uh, being a single man in New York City. A lot of things can get nice and funky. But I, so I got married later on in life, and I would suggest anybody who's not ready to settle down, don't settle don't down. Do and you know what you can do th these days? You can just be honest. Right. Because yeah, people, you it never know work. what you get with being honest. Yeah. yeah. You give them too yeah. much. Yeah, honey. so poly relationships to me <laughs> is trash. <laughs> That's right, honey. You hear me? Trash. That's trash. <laughs> yeah, I'm with him. That was it. <laughs> I'm with him. Now, my jersey in the rafter. Yes, sir. Right. Hey, coach. <laughs> right. My, my jersey up there, man. I'm good. Okay, so next one, Trash and Fire. Being sick, but still filming on your, like, filming, doing your dream, but you sick on, on set. I don't know hey, if Michael you can. I don't know if you could do that more. Michael Jordan's sick, or like just, that just came out. Who saw that? He had uh, he did like 18 holes of golf, 
52 beers and he scored, or, or and 10 beers, and then he went to score 52 points in a game too. So you know that, that you got to give the ghost some credit. Yeah. Uh, being sick though, filming is the worst. Yeah. It's the worst. During the power show, I had 102 fever when they were doing the scene where uh, we were all on on the motorcycles stealing all the the, the kilos of coke. Oh, yeah. And I, I had 102 fever sitting there, and I was just, like dying. They're like. Don't worry, it was like a 16 hour day. It was the Damn. worst. Oh it's trash, it's yeah, trash, trash. trash. I bet. Well, I, trash. Yeah, I, I know for you filming. Trash. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah trash. I mean, sick of filming. Yeah. Okay, and last one business meetings with 50 Cent, trash or fire? Those are fire because those are like, those are lessons. Fifth, if you, if and when you do it, Fifth is, you know, listen, I'm, I'm, Great with 50, he's the best boss I've ever had. He's super accessible. I owe my, I truly do owe my career uh, to him and I'm grateful yeah. to 50 Cent. Yeah. Yeah. And 50 Cent is also like Dion in the way that 50 Cent lifts up everybody around him. He doesn't give you a whole lot of chances. Like, I mean, you, if you keep messing up, you're not, 50 is not gonna mess with you, but he does lift up everybody around him because that makes him go even higher. So nothing but love and respect to 50 mm -hmm. Cent. Yeah. Thank you. That's because you're from Queens, you know what I mean? Yo, man, Tommy Queens, yeah, it's like, that's my guy right there. Guy Brewer. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Well, hold on, we can also ask Dion, business meetings with 50 Cent, how are they? Oh, man, fire. Fire, he's great. Um, he's doing your next movie, right? So I think 50 is, um, 50's really, really great, man. Like, it's interesting because he is, um, I think he's a, um, I think he's actually a genius in terms of the creative ability that he's actually putting forth for television. And it's funny, man, because you could look at someone in one way, but the reality is this guy has 20-something TV shows on network television. Oh, wow. So, yeah, and um, yeah, he's pretty incredible, man. And then also running his own brand and all those things. but. In a meeting, he's incredible. Like we've had multiple meetings, multiple Zooms, television shows, movie ideas. It's like, he just clicks on, man, he really gets it. And what he does really well that makes him different from a lot of people is he knows what he knows and he knows what he doesn't know. And that makes for a very, very good leader and a boss in terms of when you're running business. And it's a lot like me, like I know what I know and I know what I do not know. And, that's, and I'm not gonna act like I know something I don't know. Yeah. And that's the bottom line. That's why you get a good team of people around you. Yeah. So you ain't gotta make no mistakes. Yeah, 50 always says, I didn't go to Harvard, but a lot of people who work for me did. I uh, know that's not yeah. <laughs> I love that shit. Yeah. Um, that's not um, You just dropped some jewels. Just <laughs> <laughs> I got a question for both of y'all. Top three hip hop artists. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna go for my all time number one favorite, and that's uh, Rock Him. Uh, number two will be Nas. Uh, number three will be Big L. Okay. You left Eminem out? We left Eminem out. You left out? Eminem out? Hold on, you're white man. How would you leave Eminem hey, out? Hey, that's, that's, that's his top three. We do that on the show. That's his top three. I'm just saying, it's top three. All right, top, top three. Sorry, all right. Trash. 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 That's okay. Trash. 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 like this. My top three white hip hop artists. <laughs> King and G. My, my number one, is he hip hop? No, no, he jams. No, he just rip stops. <laughs> Turns his competition into a ziplock. Um, I, I would say uh, Eminem, uh, my number one. And then I'll say uh, third base, sure, MC Search from third base, yeah. Over Pimp Minister Pete Nice, you mean? Um, and then my number uh, three will be uh, uh, Blanco himself, Millie's out of Boston. No vanilla ice? No vanilla ice. Right. Is, is, he on, is, he on, is he on your top three white hip hop? Absolutely. All right, there you go. What Any you man who can steal a beat, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, that's tough, man. I, I don't know. Um, you got to do white and black, I guess. I don't know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. That's tough. I would say um, Nas, obviously. Um, what's the question again? Top, top three hip hop artists. Hip hop artists. Yeah. Not lyricists. No, just top three. Oh, wow. Top three. So there's a difference? You think that's a difference? Absolutely. Uh, Nas, Karis one Yeah. yeah. Um, and I would say, damn, a third would probably have to be... You like you grew up on LA. And just for the city, man, I would have to say Common. Com oh, Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, he went artist on you. He went artist on you. He went artist on you. Um, besides this big movie, Fear, that's about to drop, and we hope, we praying it go number one. We want Fear to go number one. Yes. What other projects y'all got coming up? 
man, Besides you know what? That. This is the one we're doing right now, but we've just been talking about a bunch of stuff, man. There's a couple of uh, docu-series things that Joe is working on with his new production company with his brother, Albin, okay. uh, the Sakura Boys. Okay, he's the Sakura Boys. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, and I'm sure we're going to mix and match. There's a few things. I mean, I'm doing uh, currently getting ready to do uh, Floyd Mayweather's Life Story, which is pretty dope. Uh, we also just set up Master P's uh, series at Viacom. Okay. Uh, we're doing John Lewis at Participant. Wow. Um, and we have a really big action heist movie at Sony called Free Agents. Dope, dope, yeah. dope, 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 yeah. dope. Well, we just want to thank y'all for stopping by Trash Talk Show. Hey, man, y'all welcome back anytime. Much I'm ready to stay. This is great. Yeah. Everything y'all got going on. Give it up for Joseph Shakur. Yeah. And Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Talking about fear, and I don't live in fear. Let's check this out. I'm right here in Atlanta, Georgia, the home of Martin Luther King, the great Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King rolling over in this motherfucking grave right now, the way we out here acting, the way we out here being killed by the police department. I'm sick and tired of it as a black man having to wake up in the morning seeing somebody lost their life due to law enforcement. It's sick as me, I'm, t I'm just tired of it. I'm, I'm not even afraid for myself, I'm afraid for my kids and everybody else's kids. As a black people, as a community, we gotta do better. We have to go in here and force change. Not just suspending some motherfuckers for a couple of months and losing their job. No, we need real justice. Us black men out here, we are being hunted and killed. And I'm fucking sick and tired of it. Walking outside every day, acting like everything okay, but it's not. Because the minute the police get behind me and pull me over, I don't know what to fucking think. Am I getting a ticket? Am I going to jail? Am I going to fucking die? Every day as a black man, we on the fucking edge. And no, it's not a cry. It's not at all. I'm telling y'all the facts of life here in America. Us as black people, we got to stop killing one another. I'm tired of that. Mothers and fathers burying their kids. It should be the other way around, the kids burying the parents. We have to do better. And it starts with us, not pointing the finger at our OGs, because the OGs ain't talking us shit. We ain't got no legals on today. Jesse Jack, trash. Al Shaw, trash. Them ain't legals. Puppets. Somebody paying them to come here and there. Just for the news. We need real people that love us and value us. How y'all feel about today's topic? How y'all feel about that? <sighs> well, As a black know, man, how you feel? Um, I've, been on, I've been on both sides, you know what I mean? But I know when you get pulled over, it's uh, it's a scary thing, you know. And and the way I look, they be ready to beat me. <laughs> so I be just trying to be cool, you know. You try to give respect, and then sometimes if you don't get the respect, us as black men, we gotta understand. You just gotta take it. Sometimes to going back and forth with them makes it worse. Sometimes it just escalate the situation, and you know. So it's hard though. It's hard to wake up every day and see all these people killing each other. And then you got the cops killing us. It's like we killing each other, the cops killing us. They just got to start with the kids. We got to start talking to the kids, man. Yeah. Making sure that the kids understand that violence. I mean, fighting people is cool. Like back in the day, we used to fight. Like They don't do that no more. They don't do that no more. And now you got to worry about the police. I mean, as a, as a kid, I got thrown up on police cars and stuff. And I was just walking around the corner. Yeah. You so. probably jerk though. You probably bad as fuck. <laughs> I was a good kid. I had no tattoos or nothing. Hey, what tattoo got to do with being violent? Oh, right. Now they just want to shoot me. <laughs> as you can see, man, these toppers get real hot here on Trash Talk. But check this out though. Check this out. If you want to come and be a part of the live audience here at Trash Talk, there's some things you have to do. Like, look at all things that's probably floating right here up there. Click the link so you can come and be a part of the Trash Show. And if you don't, I have to say it, you trash, 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 trash. Nobody has.
having that much control over me. So I, when, I, when I pick up on the frequency, I dial it back. I let them have it. Cause I'm trying to push my frequency back to let them know it's stronger, and that's what that's what the the, the, the collide come but in. But it's easy for you to say, cause you probably got your own house. I ain't got my own house. I'm living with her. <laughs> so I'm under her room. Oh room. yeah, my boy. So I got to pull up. I my boy. Go, you know what I'm saying? No call. Boy, I need about I need about thirty days with you, man. <laughs> thirty days with you, boy. I get you back on the right track, boy.